Dan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor. I'm showing you right now the base mount of my deck vertical antenna. Uh, basically what you see here are a couple of really thick plastic washers and there are two more of them down there below. This entire post here on the deck is probably about three and a half feet high, maybe closer to four feet high. Aluminum tubing and all this stuff here, turnbuckles and screw eyes and everything to keep that thing securely mounted to the deck post. Now the beauty of this system is that I can take it down in about 15 seconds should there be a lightning uh, threat. Of course if you wait too long when there's a lightning threat you may as well cash in your chips and leave that antenna up because you don't want to get killed trying to save your radio. So the DN thunderstorms here in the Black Hills can pop up out of almost nothing. Almost nothing. I don't think we're going to get them today though. So here we got this electrical tape wrapped around here, Gorilla Tape, electrical tape, to keep that tubing from sliding down in there. It's 22 feet high with a capacitor at the base to load it for resonance on 14 megahertz. I also have a couple of other pieces of tubing here, which if I stick them in place of what I've got in here, I can make this antenna work 24 megahertz so why don't I just show you how that's done now should there be a, a thunderstorm threat just pull that thing out of there like that and uh, we'll take those pieces of tubing apart later on I'm going to put that back when I'm done let me just see if I can zoom in on here and uh, give you a little better few of those insulators. I don't know how well this is going to focus for you, but you can kind of see the basic gist of it. Now what I've got here is a couple of other pieces of tubing left over from a taller vertical I had. This is kind of a kludge, kludge assembly right here with solder wrapped around there and aluminum foil and everything to make it so it will uh, <laughs> it'll maintain contact in there. <clears throat> and then I've got some, well in this case it's silver duct tape. I've got a, a very wide repertoire of tapes. You see how you slide that in there, right down there until it stops. And I've pre-measured and tested all of this. A little tape around there to make it a nice fit. Just goes right down in there and this solder here uh, kind of helps to make a good contact on there and you just wedge it down. Now I'm ready to go with a with a resonant antenna on 24 megahertz with that 50 pico farad. Did I say a 50 ohm capacitor? I'm really losing it aren't I? 50 pico farads down there at the bottom probably about 11 12 feet high a little too high for 24 megahertz but that capacitor resonates it to about three-eighths of a wavelength and for some odd reason this antenna also resonates by coincidence on 50 megahertz so I think that's sort of cool it's a lot shorter too and but you never ever want to mess with lightning you never want to leave your antenna connected to your radio in the event of a thunderstorm. <clears throat> Just never do it. I did it when I was uh, when I was a kid at field day once. I remember operating during the thunderstorm. And I didn't stop until sparks were flying from the back of the radio. You know that radio and I both survived that. Uh, a little bit of stupidity. I don't think I'm going to tempt the fates like that again. I'm a little too old for that. 
happen. I'm not too old to get on CW, but like I said, conditions are rotten. Just rotten. There must be a solar flare or something going on. Stan Jabalisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73 and so long for now.